Hello, my name is John Plummer and welcome to another Merico Technologies video presentation. Today's presentation will be on measuring hardness using a durometer. The hardness property of both rubbers and plastics, in fact metals, all kinds of different materials can have a hardness value. <clears throat> it's an indication of the resistance of the material to indentations or marring the surface. For plastics, the common instrument used to measure a durometer is called a shore durometer. There are actually 12 different durometer scales, which we'll show you shortly. The two scales that are most commonly used are Shore A and Shore D. They represent soft plastics and hard plastics. Another scale that might be used for plastic materials is Shore 000 or Shore 000. That is for the softest kind of plastic material, even a gel-like material. We'll talk about the basic features of a durometer first, and then I'll show you a few different types of durometers. A durometer consists of a body. Inside the body is a carefully calibrated spring that measures the extension or, or impression forces necessary to move the indenter. The indenter is located at the bottom of the durometer, right next to the base plate. And to indicate the amount of indention of this particular material when it's pushed into a plastic, there's a scale on the durometer. All durometers have a scale that goes from 0 to 100. The reading of 0 indicates that the indenter, which in this case is a half-rounded little disc, is fully extended. And there's a specific measurement for the, the length of this extension, and there's no force on it, so the the dial should read zero. If this particular indenters, indenter was fully pushed in so it was level with the plate, the reading on the durometer would be 100. That indicates that durometer has reached its maximum force. It can't read any higher than 100. So you'll get a hardness reading for all durometers somewhere between zero and 100. And it's important when you're running a durometer test to use the right kind of durometer. Let's talk now about three common types of durometers that are used to measure the hardness properties of plastic or rubber materials. We'll start with a Shore D durometer, which measures the hardest plastic surfaces. Again, the scale reading goes from 0 to 100. The plate on it has an indenter tip extending from it, and we'll see in a later slide what the shape of this tip is. It's a very sharp tip, very pointed, so that it can penetrate the surface of the hard plastic material. The next type of durometer is a Shore A durometer. It also has a scale of 0 to 100, and the tip on it is also a sharp tip, but it's not as sharp as for the D durometer, the tip is actually a little bit flattened off because the rubbers or plastics that this tip is penetrating aren't as hard as the ones that are measured with the D durometer. A final type of durometer is the Shore Triple Zero durometer. The scale is 0 to 100, and the tip is actually a half semicircle shape. It's designed to provide a lot of force over the surface of the soft plastic material. Most of the materials that are measured with the triple zero durometer are very soft materials, almost gel-like materials. They really don't have a significant hardness to them at all.
will now proceed to do some durometer measurements on different materials. One thing I might mention about durometers is the accuracy of their particular measurement. Each durometer is built with a very carefully calibrated spring so that the readings of 0 or 50 or 100 are related to specific forces. When the Shore triple zero durometer is used, the force that will compress the indenter to its maximum to a reading of 100 is 118 grams. When the Shore A durometer is used, the maximum force that is required to compress the indenter all the way into the base is 832 grams. And when the Shore D durometer is used, the maximum force that is needed to compress the spring so the indenter is level with the base is 4,533 grams. That's a big difference in force, but that's what the accuracy of durometers is based on, measuring very accurate forces with an accurately calibrated spring. The basic technique for measuring a durometer will first start with a soft silicone material. We'll use an A durometer. A couple important things your sample should be at least a quarter of an inch thick. The surface that you're measuring should be flat and smooth and even. It shouldn't have depressions on it or bumps on it because if the needle contacts one of those areas, you'll get a false reading. To do the test, you must take the, the plastic sample or rubber sample, push the durometer into it until the base is level with the base of the sample. In this case, I'll push this A durometer into the soft silicone. The needle indicates a maximum reading of about 64 or 65, so this is the shore A hardness of this silicone sample. We'll now measure the hardness of a hard epoxy polymer. This is in the Shore D range, and what I've done is I've mounted our Shore D durometer on what's called a durometer stand. The advantage of this particular stand is that it applies a constant force to your test sample so that you know you're pushing the needle in as far as it goes with the proper amount of force. There's a weight on top of this instrument that can either accommodate a D durometer, an A durometer, I have it set for a D. You put the sample down, center it on the needle, use this handle to raise the base, and as I'm raising the base, the durometer is raising. When the weight comes off the top of where it was resting, you get a reading on the durometer scale. In this case, it's 85. So that is the Shore D reading of this particular sample. It's common when you're measuring durometers to check several points on your sample, you might want to get four or five, six measurements. I'd like to mention a few points in closing about the proper operation of a durometer and also the proper interpretation of the numbers that you get from a durometer. It's important to point out that a durometer hardness is not related to any other property of the polymer. It doesn't indicate compressive strength, tensile, it doesn't indicate anything about elastic modulus, it doesn't indicate anything about the density of the sample. You can have dense samples that are soft and you can have light samples that are very hard. All the hardness measurement tells you is how the surface of the material resists indenting forces. The durometer reading by itself is an important thing that you as a customer could do to, let's say, monitor the cured properties of your material. If you're not doing an, an extensive test of the physical properties, perhaps you left the material to cure overnight, you come in the next day and you measure the shore hardness of it, you might expect a reading of 50. If you're only getting a reading of 10 or 20, two things could happen. It wasn't mixed properly, the wrong ratio of liquids was used, or it wasn't cured properly. <clears throat> As such, the durometer hardness is a good indication that you can use to monitor the cured properties of your material. It's also important to point out that two durometer hardnesses from two different scales 
don't really have a correlation. There have been extensive studies over the years on this, so you can't say that a certain sure D reading is always the same as a certain sure A reading. They're separate scales, they operate with different forces. The best thing is to stick with one scale that measures your material properly and use that particular durometer to monitor that material. I hope you've learned a little bit today about running durometers, understanding their operation, and how best to interpret the data. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye now.